Have you ever had a cavity? Oh, yeah, of course. How many? Uh, I don't know, three, four when I was a kid. Damn, really? On your real teeth? Yeah. So Cavities aren't that big of a deal. They just fill them up, and that's it. Wow. Check, check, check. I never had one. You don't, like, uh, get them filled because there's pain. You get it filled because it's like your teeth is being, like, uh, chewed up. Wow. Yeah. If you, if you don't address it at some point, it just eats all the way through your tooth, and you have, like, gum disease and stuff. Wow. But, yeah, I think <clears throat> uh, I think you're going to survive. Huh. I was worried, dude. I'm Googling. I didn't realize people get five cavities. <clears throat> yeah, people get way more than that. That's insane. I never had a cavity my whole life till recently. When all well, you were due for it then. Your teeth have been, you know, you've been drinking soda or something. It just, yeah, you know, ice cream. I used that to, acid in there. Did I used to eat a pint of ice cream every day for a year when I was on food stamps. Well, it'll do it to you. Yeah. I think it's more like soda mm. and stuff, like the acid and like... Uh, oh, you know, I drink a lot of soda water. Uh-huh. I was trying They're to like, be like that dude. Remember, he said water's for peasants. Oh, uh, yeah, Andrew Tate. Yep. Yeah. I was drinking too much. You think that's what did? Taking well, what's he drink away? then if he's not drinking water? He drinks uh, that soda water like I drink, like everything. Oh, really? The alpha males, we're the big dogs. Oh, wow. Come on. Yeah, you warned me about that I think he'd be before. drinking like... Uh, I mean, like, it eats away at your enamel, because it is, like, acidic. He's a kickboxer, dude. He ain't worried about no acid from a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about Tate here. I thought, uh, <clears throat> start the show today with a quote from the Bible. Oh, I this love is, that. Uh, Revelation 17, 9, 10. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. There are also seven kings, five of whom have fallen already, one is reigning, the other has not yet come, but he is to remain only a little while. Uh, why don't you uh, go ahead and explain that one? <laughs> well, basically, that... Uh, what are the seven heads? So the seven heads are the seven sins. The seven heads are the seven mountains on which the woman sits. Yeah, so it's the uh, seven sins that keep coming at her. Why are they mountains then? Because seven sins are heads big, are, yeah. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. Yeah, so there's seven deadly sins, and, you know, this. it's always hard, so she's on those. That's why they used them as mountains, because it's really big, the temptation from the sin. So there are also seven kings, five of whom have fallen already. Yeah, and, you know, that's basically she messed up five times and got forgiveness, so... What are the kings, though? That's like, you know, king's somebody who messes up. <laughs> the king is somebody who messes up. <laughs> yeah. That's what the Bible means. <laughs> yeah. One of whom is reigning. That means one of the sins that one of her temptations is bothering her the most. Oh, I know what it is. She beat five of the temptations. One's reigning. That's the temptation for maybe gluttony, like overeating. And that one's really in her head right now. And the other has not yet come, but he is to remain only a little while. And that's why you need to stay strong. Keep your faith. And when that temptation tries to get you, you just, you know, you know it's not going to last long. But he is to remain for only a little while. That's not Jesus? Jesus but, comes back? Uh, no, nah, because when Jesus comes back, he's here to stay. <laughs> okay, yeah. I mean, hey, you're the expert. <laughs> <laughs> I've never actually been to church or anything before, but uh, really? you know, yeah, that's what I assume most of the Bible is like. It's a lot of uh, talking, not really talking to you, but you know, talking around you. I think it the mount, the mountains are actually this, and the kings are actually that, and then yeah, I can't believe wars have been fought over this. Who knew that you could misinterpret yeah. this somehow? But it seems pretty clear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, dude, I've been getting into reading the Bible. It's funny you bring that up. I feel like some of it is just like a, a directions, like a blueprint for how to live. Like, you know, about building up other people. It's a lot like Mr. Rogers, honestly. But what about the seven mountains and the seven heads? Well, I mean, that's like... And the you, five of whom have already fallen. One you, of whom is reigning and the other has not yet come. But he is to remain only a little while. See, that's what, whatever you're going through, you'll put that to it. You'll be like, oh, it's talking to me. Yeah, man. You that's read the, the That's why the Knicks got to get it together this year. That makes perfect sense. I feel like we're going to make the playoffs. How this, many rings do they got? Uh, they haven't won a ring in about 50 years, but wow. there are five players playing at a time. There's 12 <laughs> players on the team. Yeah. So that's 12 total. 
12 seven players deadly, times seven. You know, the, the bench is only seven players. That's seven deadly sins. Yeah. So that really is like, you know, they're, they're thinking out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's gluttony right there. You know, Jordan didn't eat. That's what they say. They never seen Jordan eat. Well, I think he ate and then he like got sick. Oh, and really? He, play, he played a whole game with the flu. That was the flu game. <laughs> he played against the Utah Jazz. I can't believe you don't read the Bible. I always thought you did. I just felt like you were a big into God. And well, I'm trying now, but I mean, there's a lot. Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot to interpret. Uh, you got, you know, it comes best to you in the silence. Some of those <laughs> things you just got to skip through and find you an easy one. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid. And in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. So it's telling you to go buy, like, property. Well, you know, I think what it's saying is it's saying the kingdom of heaven, people get sidetracked by materialistic things, and he just needs to, everything he needs is for free in the kingdom of heaven. But he's buying the field, though. That's a metaphor. He doesn't just, oh, all right. Here's an easy one. I as, feel like that's your answer for everything. As a sword sharpens a sword, you've a been, man we've, sharpens a man. We've been doing this podcast for a year now. <laughs> you've been, this is the only Bible quote you know. <laughs> it's the best It's the one. sword. It's always about, you're in, in your head, the Bible is a story about swords and sharpening. No, to me, I'll tell you why this is the best one. It sums up a lot of the Bible, in my opinion. I feel like a lot of it is build up your brother instead of break him down. You okay. Know? That's what a lot of the Bible is. You know, it's so easy to break somebody down. Oh, look at your knee knockers, Nick, you know? You see them walking over, knees bumping into each other. Everybody's laughing. Go ahead, read us another one. What do you got? You Where'd you find the college edition Bible? You got to find it's called Easy to Read Bible. Yeah, I read the children's Bible. That's the one that helps me. They'll say stuff like Anthony takes a toy from Jimmy and Jimmy wants the toy back and he looks up and he's like, Anthony, I really want it. Huh. And that's a lot easier of a Bible. Well, it's, like the, it's like the jail Bible. Yeah. Yeah, it's the kind of Bible you can just sort of tell to another guy. Yeah. I don't want to see you on the street corner arguing with black Israelites. <laughs> I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. I mean, you just got to love God. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's calming. A- Listen to you read the Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever thought about going into a ministry? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. I mean, I feel like uh, a lot of this stuff, I think they could shorten these sentences up. Yeah. I think they are, somebody was you know, getting paid by the word here. Well, also, that's before they had so many words. You know, now we got rappers inventing words like, you know, bling should be in the Bible. You know, Little Wayne's bling. Like right. heaven Well, the thing blinging. you got to keep in mind about the Bible, too, this, none of this stuff was in English the first time. Oh, yeah, that's a Jesus huge was thing. speaking in like Aramaic or Hebrew or something. So I, eventually it just got to English. Then eventually it got into like different kinds of English. So I was somewhere, I don't know if it was in Spain or somewhere, or I'm not sure, but they had Bibles like that were like 1,200 years old. It's crazy. They were in glass cases. You couldn't really oh, read yeah, them. Yeah. I got the videos. I'll post them. Huge, dude. Like I'm telling you, huge Bible, a Bible the size like, of a queen size bed. Oh, and I'm wow. like, what did they sum up? What did they leave out of these? Right. Well, you I know. think back then too, it was like uh, you had to be real careful about writing because if you, it was all written by hand. It was like a monk that had to transcribe the entire Bible. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you don't want like a small thing because your 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 hand's gonna slip. But so even if you the word, like a big page, it's just like. But the letters were still tiny. Oh wow! Like you know, you ever see those little pocket Bibles, and yeah. then they got one the size of your queen size bed. It's like, you know, who who knows Some, more? Something's here. being left out here. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe if it's just a big thing, they were afraid to fold papers over too much. Yeah, maybe the, the ink would rub off or something. So, what about would you ever memorize the Bible and go up to people and just ask them quotes? Yeah, that's what I was hoping you were going to have for me. But I had a few, though, but there, it's a lot to remember. There's a lot of you don't walk alone. You know, if you're walking with God, you're not walking alone. He's always with you. No matter what, he's the one person that will never let you down. You know, but you got to ask for his strength every day. It's too hard on your own. The kingdom of heaven is like leaving that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour until it was all leavened. 
See, we got to know that. what leavened means. It's like bread stuff. It's like yeast that you put in bread. It's wow. like the bread has been leavened. Oh, so now the flour is bloomed. Yeah. yeah. See that? See, imagine going to like Africa and trying to just tell that to somebody who's never heard it before. Yeah. And like, no, no, this is this is the real thing right here. And the guy's just like, I don't know what you just said. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you got guns. Yeah, pretty much. That's what that <laughs> plays about. The people from South Park. You've seen it, right? No. Nah. The Book of Mormon. You never seen it? No. Nah. Oh, well, that's. I've heard, I mean, I know what the story is. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it's kind of about. Makes you think. I mean, I don't know. I'd go over there. Well, and I mean, do this shit up. is already written in code. Right. And then you're trying to speak to somebody who doesn't even speak English. And, and they only you're trying speak. To, you're trying to convince them that this is the word of God. And also, you got to find there's some some of those villages. There's only twenty people that speak the language. So yeah. you got to find that language in specific and know that this other guy's not lying to you or misinterpreting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What What God is in Africa? Like, Because everybody's got some sort of a God. I mean, I think there's local. I mean, Islam is the big one, but I think they have local tribal tribal stuff going on. And I think mostly at this point, it's, all, it's mostly Christian. It's, yeah, wow. Been, in Africa too, over. you think? Well, yeah. I mean, I think uh, Christianity got there a long time ago and it spread, you know, just like in Mexico or, you know. Argentina or something. I thought that's where Christianity started was in Mexico. You thought that? Yeah, I guess. Wow. <laughs> and you're a Christian. <laughs> well, I, I just, I don't exactly know. I was raised Catholic, to be honest with you. I guess we've had this conversation Rome, before. I'm pretty sure that, yeah, these are one, one is contained inside the other. You yeah. thought Christianity came from Mexico? Or like, you know, Spain or somewhere over there? Spain. <laughs> Maybe. <yeah>. Wow. <laughs> wow, where'd it come from? Rome? I mean, did, Jerusalem. It's, it's oh wow! <laughs> basically, Palestine, Would have been Israel. My third guess. Wow, really? The Middle East. Yeah. Holy cow! It turns out the Middle East. They really got a lot going on there. Wow. Yeah. Back in the day, that was really the uh, that was <laughs> that was the birthplace of it. I wouldn't have, if you gave me twenty guesses. I wouldn't have guessed it. It's just like the way rap came from New York City. Yeah. And spread to the rest of the, the world, but you know. Wow! Right under the Bronx wow. Bridge. Yeah. So dude, you really I thought Christian Christians came from Mexico and they went back over the atlantic to the europe and spread <laughs> yeah. christianity there maybe and then spain just, or rome i guess i figured over in one wow. of those european well they countries. were into it yeah of course i mean the romans were down but it's like uh, of course i mean yeah it spreads from wow so it came from jerusalem wow jerusalem sorry <laughs> my god i wonder if we're i don't know if we're offending people or if people I, are just astounded that you didn't I'm know trying that. to learn that's amazing i'm learning i'm new to it i've are seen you? the light I well, think, you know, I, I don't think you are new to it. Well, That's I would show up. That's the thing. I'd show up and do the motions, but I'd really be in church, like, oh, I want a BMW. And now I'm like, just guide me. You know, I'm just right. now. I'm actually into it. I'm having a relationship. I'm talking to God. Help me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but I'm not. Uh, you know, I guess I need to learn the logistics. Wow, <laughs> I need to learn. I've been reading the Bible though. I feel like uh, on the on the ships. They got to have a, there's like a chapel or something somewhere. Yeah, you would think. I got to look into it. I feel like those people that are going on cruise ships, they, they are a, like uh, coming from the south. Or something. Yeah, they are real Christian. I know there's a lot of AA stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I would think because like uh, if you're really like deeply religious and stuff and you go out and you're going to Belize, it's like you got to pray first off that this boat just stays in the water. Yeah, <laughs> and they're very religious people. That's what's got me getting so into it. I've been hanging out with these families, like Christian families, and just really God-loving people. Uh, well. They're so nice and happy. They don't gossip. They're in a positive mood. Uh, not worried, you know, so I'm starting to take a foot. I'm telling you, I've seen the light, Dan. Wow. Well, I'm sure, too, It's there's that, and then there's all, like, the Filipino crewmates. Those guys are, like, oh, yeah. super Christian. They're extremely religious. It's all, like, Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, like, they are. Yeah. They won't eat pork on a Wednesday or something. Very respectful, nice, treat people good, look them in the eye. Wow. Being in New York been messing me up. Like, it's, you know, it's like we got you're the biggest, naturally. We got the biggest churches, but nobody's going. Right. And you're naturally rude in New York. I don't know what it is. I'm here for like a month. You know, you just, you're not as polite. It's, it's, it's weird to be kind hearted in New York. Well, it's a sign of weakness. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, once you show them that, no, you can rip me off for a dollar. Then the next time it's like, let's see if I can get them for $2. See, it's a sign of weakness, but really it's actually a sign of strength because it takes a strong person to be like, come here, sit on down. Come saddle up, partner. Let right. Let me get to know you. That's the real strong. That's the leader. 
But I mean, like when you're in a city like this, though, we gotta, you know, there is a pecking order. Right? Yeah, so there you is. You don't want the, you got to survival of the fittest. I'll tell you what, I sucked up to a deli guy, dude. I'm telling you, the Lord will get you eating good too. Because I went up to the deli guy, and I see he was all mad. He's like, two minutes. I didn't even ask him for the grill. This is the one on the right. Yeah, no, no, this is the one across, across the street. The street. Uh, and you know, he knows I go there and eat a lot, but yeah. I didn't even get an opportunity to ask him. I was like, oh yeah, take your time, you know. I was like, it's all good, man. I look forward to to the food. I know you're going to make it, man. You're real good at what you do, man. I appreciate having you here. Boom, I hit this dude, free hash brown. Wow. Dude was telling me about, you know, he, then he started complaining about the government. I kind of quieted down a little, but right. he's like, you know, they're messing up over there. We need the money over here. Yeah. You know, he was complaining a little, but either way, I got the free hash brown. Never got the, you know, dude hooked it up. Little plate. Wow. You know, and that's really what it's about. Yeah, I mean, uh, you you track more with honey than whatever, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you just... Uh, well, I think that's a different situation than like... Uh, that's not going to resolve a lot of situations you get into in the city where it is just a guy who's trying to fuck you over. And stab you and or something. And it's like, well, you got to make a decision. It's like, am I? is this going to be the, the day for me? Oh, yeah. Has it gone far enough? Like my Uncle Marty says, you got to kick his knee out. He said, say, I'm going to punch you in the face and kick his knee out. Oh, wow. Works every time. That's like uh, what the UFC guys do now. Yeah, that was originally Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do stuff. But it's like the UFC now, it's like back in the day, UFC was like a brawl. It was like yeah. a street fight where you're trying to just like, it's all out. Now it's just 90% of the UFC is just stand back, leg kick, leg uh, kick, leg kick. And you're doing the fucked up leg kicks to like the inner, inner leg, knee, yeah. Where it's like you're trying to dislocate their, their knee or something. You ever take one of those kicks? <laughs> I did, dude. I, t- I went to MMA. That shit hurts, bro. Oh, wow. I mean, you can't put... F- that you should be... That should be... It's borderline. That should be illegal. It hurts. Because it's not even that it hurts, but it's like you're going to fuck up their knee. But that's the whole thing about it. Well, it's like, isn't there enough other stuff we can do? We can punch and we can br- we can wrestle. We can throw wow. head kicks. But like the knees, that is such a fucked up way to hurt somebody. You know how back in the day they'd say, go to the body. Now you got to go to the inner thighs. <laughs> you know, it's different. I saw a video on Twitter. It was street fight. Now this is like coming down to street fights now where it's like not you don't even throw haymakers anymore. You just go straight to the knees. Yeah, dude, I would. Guys like, in the street are getting fucked up. Told you my Uncle Marty knew about that in the 70s. Oh, wow. He said, say it real aggressive. I'm going to punch you in the face. And then you kick their knee out, Dom. Yeah, nobody sees that coming. Nope. And you go about your day and keep cutting grass. Mm. Man, I had... Uh, Last night, I always, my problem now is that, like, uh, I don't get hungry until it's too late to get food. Mm-hmm. Everything kind of closes around, like, 9 o'clock. Yeah, well, you Most got the fried chicken. Well, like, the, exactly. That's the problem. <laughs> the only thing that's open past 10 o'clock is, like, something really unhealthy. But I, I, don't, I don't even think about eating until, like, after 10 o'clock. So the only thing, I, had to, I went down to, the, I got fried chicken last night. Yeah. It felt horrible. Oh, yeah. I mean, it tasted good for, like, the, I felt t- good for, like, five minutes. And then immediately it was just, like that and then this morning i woke up feeling horrible yeah dude i got it the one why. day the dude was like yeah i don't got no um no gloves my bad cousin he just picked it up with his <laughs> oh, hand man. i was like dude i don't even want to eat it now uh, you should put a sign on the door <laughs> yeah 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 no, so no i haven't gloves. been back since <laughs> yeah i got a napkin yeah, so I was like, dude, I almost, can I grab it? Can you open up the window? <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> he didn't even offer. It's like, you got to do it. Hey, you know, it's all hot and greasy on his hands, too, you would think. Yeah, he was doing the trash. Wow. And I came and got the food. Now, I got it from a different place uh, further down. So it was higher quality chicken, but it's still like, I don't know how anybody eats this kind of stuff. For Man, I lived by a good one, a real good one in the Bronx. It wasn't a Kennedy's. Like, you know, there's two different ones. There's Crown. a Kennedy's. Kennedy's and Crown, yeah. but yeah, it was one of those, dude. It was like that spicy, well, good, like, hot shit. Yeah, yeah, Crown fried chicken and Kennedy's. It's everywhere, but I think it's not even a chain. You just need the sign. I think it's just people buy the sign, so they just you call it either Kennedy or, or Crown. Yeah, but then I think they're all just run independently by like, guaranteed. Some guy. Oh, yeah. you know it. Then every seven years, put the taxes in somebody else's name. Well, yeah, there's that, and it's like every place. That has like a big ass menu that they just don't actually have any of that food. Right. All they have is chicken and and like you know beef patties. Yeah. But you look at the wall, it says like pasta primavera. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're out of it today. Yeah. 
Yeah, I used to have this one spot when I lived in the Bronx where it was a chicken strip and barbecue for like a dollar twenty five. And then oh. every now and then when you go it sounds terrible, but I was broke at the time. A dollar twenty five was a lot, but I would go there and sometimes people would really hook it up like three chicken strips, barbecue sauce and make it nice. Uh. Sometimes they'd find the little thinnest piece of chicken. And it uh, ruins your day. You're like, bro, I needed that dollar twenty five worth of chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Well, it's like you got to catch it right when they put it out. Oh, uh, yeah. But they pick through all the good ones, and then by the end, it's just you know the leftovers. It's like that with the Chinese buffet at the airport too. They'll even tell you, "No, I'll take your order." I'll be like, "No, I'll wait." You know, uh, <laughs> you I got see? all day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> You get Chinese buffet at the airport? Sometimes. Like Panda Express? Yeah, sometimes. Oh, that's I'm, disgusting. A, I'm a loser, Dan. What do you, no, I'm, but I'm I mean, a like, loser, but... I couldn't do that before a flight. I feel horrible. Yeah, well, sometimes I have six hours between flights. You know I'm not booking these. Wow. Yeah, sometimes I will. Sometimes it looks good. You got to you gotta pick and choose. Atlanta Airport has a pretty R8 one. Oh, Throw some of that orange chicken. Texas, not so good. The thing good with eating China. before a flight, it's like you got to really think... Is there a slight chance this is going to make me sick? Yeah. you got. I always got to play it as safe as possible. My stomach's like, cheese like pizza. lead. Oh, you always do cheese pizza? Or just like a, the, the real basic sandwich where there's not even like, you know, just, like a, just like a turkey sandwich dry. Oh, really? Yeah. I feel like that would make me sick. Nah. You know what's crazy? No matter what you do, there's no good food in the airport. Even if you go to an expensive restaurant, $39 bagel with lox, it still tastes terrible. There's no. I had good a good food. like restaurant restaurant. I like uh, I was in Portland. You got like a hamburger. Oh yeah, this is a pretty regular. Maybe hamburger. I've had one or two like that. But somewhere. it's like the vast. If you're thinking at all about price and you're trying to catch something, there's no deals. And it does. It's and not anytime, that good. yeah, anytime it's like you see a line and people are getting bagels in the morning, that's gonna be horrible. The um, there's I mean, but then the airport lounges. Now that's some quality food right there. Some of them lounges. They got the little barbecued pork all thinly sliced. You got the lounge access? Yeah, yeah, I know people. Oh, you you don't got like the Delta. <laughs> no, I don't got the Delta, though? but I know people. Oh, you can wow. get in there. You know, I knew people with the connection. These ship people. That, that yeah, yeah. yeah. That. If you, I mean, if you're like a, a member, then you can hook somebody up. Yeah, they vonch way me. That's the thing. When I meet somebody, that's what I think about. You know, well, do they have an airport lounge? Maybe I should be extra nice to this person. Right. There was a girl. People weren't really talking to her. I became friends with her. Sweetest little southern girl. We get to the airport. She's like, oh, by the way, I got you in the lounge. Wow. I knew she had it. I think she knew I was hitting around because I was like, I can just hang with you. I don't got a flight oh, yeah. for I'll a go while. to Panda Express. <laughs> yeah. You know what she does? She gets the receipts out of the trash and she returns the receipts to her job for the reimbursement on the food, even though she's for free with the airport lounge. Wow. We get like a $50 a day per diem or whatever. Wow. Yep. That is such a trash way to get $50. <laughs> That's it's a whole one business. of the trashiest things I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should make a video about it. Good God. That'd be a very niche uh, thing. Business, corporate America, man, you got to get it when you could. $30,000 today isn't like 30000 in the 70s. Right, yeah. You got to think about it. Someday, though, I mean, just even when you're rich, do you think you're going to be able to, you're just going to pay for that? Because I think you can't just pay your way to that lounge, right? It's like 100 bucks. Mm, no, nah, I won't do it. I'm going to get the Ohio, um, whatever, American Express card. I uh, think that's the one that gets you in. 600 a well, year. Well, they keep like changing it. Because like more and more people are getting lounge oh, access, really? so they got to keep like up in the requirements. Well, you know what? I'm probably gonna get my miles up if I keep traveling the way that I am. I think once you get like a million miles, you're just in. Right. Yeah. yeah. You get to like uh, elite status. Or yeah, something. yeah. All my friends, they're million milers. They love to tell you too. Wow. Yep. They'll be like, you're gonna Sorry. get to a million miles within like three years of flying. Yeah. That is nuts. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, they'll tell you, man, million miler. They'll be like, they get first class all time. Wow. I'll tell you one thing with the uh, the access to the, uh, you know, when you do get the million miles, they let you board the plate first. In my opinion, that's worse. When I'm a million miler, I want to board last, but I want to know I have a spot for my bag. Yeah. Nobody's sitting there. You don't want to. That's the only there. reason you want to get on the plane early anyways. Right. There's no advantage to anything besides the yeah overhead compartment. Well, you get off early if you're up front. But yeah, it's like, yo, 
put me on last and make sure I have a, a compartment. That's yeah. it. That's all I want. Yeah. I should be able to go on when they're like, sir, we're going to take off. And then I just get on when the jet's already going. Right. You yeah. know, this have the sh- shortest flight possible. Right. I'm trying to figure out a way to get in the airport quicker. Honestly, like that global entry or that clear, get them all or something. I want to skip the line. You don't have pre-check or anything? No, I need to get it all. Oh, uh, well. Sometimes it's not even faster. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah LaGuardia. You get to the airport early anyway. If I, do, if I start doing LaGuardia, I feel like it's quicker. JFK is a madhouse. Oh, uh, yeah. But it's closer to us, I feel like, in a way. It is. Yeah. yeah if you're taking the cab. So were you, you're leaving on uh, Friday? I think Saturday morning, like three in the morning, Saturday morning. Because wow. my flight's at 6 a.m., my first one. Then oh I'll be in God. Alabama. I might find a little Southern Belle in the airport. You're flying from here to Alabama? Yeah, and to then Alabama to Belize. Wow. Yeah. There's a flight that goes from Alabama straight to Belize? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Weird. Yeah. I wonder how that worked out. Well, there's a lot of islands in Belize, but I don't know. A lot of people, I'm going to the main one. Which I don't. I think they're all just called the Belize Islands. I don't know the difference of them. The one I went to, a hurricane went through there last year. Man, there was nothing. Wiped them out. They're rebuilding. It's just like a little, little <laughs> bullshit airport. Um. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. It's no it's not as bad. It's like the main bullshit airport for Belize. I think Belize is like twenty islands. You know. Oh uh, yeah. And there's oh. some pretty ones. The thing that bothers me is exactly where we're going is always it's a port where we fly in and in and out of it's like the, yeah. you know so there i can't ever explore this port and there's these ancient pyramids with hieroglyphics and all this stuff i really want to see them but you love pyramids man. four hour thing we could ride goats or camels or something uh yeah i feel like the second you hear about a country you the first thing you want to know is do they got castles do they got pyramids yes old and stuff. then it's got to be like torture if you just hear imagine somebody telling you like hey man it's a sick castle down the street but now nah, you got to go that way yeah and it's just, happened <laughs> you spend the rest of your fucking miserable last flight 12 hours home thinking like man i missed out on the castles bro it's, it happened to me just recently i was in uh scotland glasgow i think that's ireland or i don't know scotland yeah. but i was in glasgow and there's like oh yeah there's a castle everybody's like oh yeah but you're not gonna have time to see it since you're only off the boats far man they're telling me it's far <laughs> oh, no. like a cab driver and he was just trying to talk me up into spending more because i'm like all right so i hang by the water just get back on the ship after an hour everybody's like oh no it's 15 20 minutes away oh. they were there for two hours they're like it's beautiful so wow i don't know i'm going back to why would they do that and they try they try That's to talk you up. up bro it's the same way they hustle <laughs> no, but why, why would the, wouldn't they want you to go to the castle well yeah he was or trying they want to you talk to spend money up. in the area yeah I, oh that's a good point yeah he kept telling me about stuff to do around the area oh man yeah that's cold-blooded yeah man <laughs> oh. i had a dude in rome in scotland they're like oh i'll try the chinese food down the street it's good yeah i had a dude in rome and uh i didn't know i guess he was like in the mob or something and this is why i keep my mouth shut in rome he tells me the trains aren't working He's like, no, the trains aren't working. I want to go to Pompeii. He's like, you got to go with us. And it's like these dudes uh, yeah, in a yeah. black car with suits and shit. I'm like, what? Uh-huh. And then I was like, listen, dude, if you're lying to me, I'm going to come back pissed off. And I seen everybody's face get serious. That's how I knew. Like something said, don't fuck with this guy. And then my buddy was like, bro, you got to be careful. They're like, yeah, you don't say that to somebody. Yeah. Are he's insane. <laughs> he's like, yeah. He's like, bro, this is Italy. Like these are like, these are like straight up people to fuck you up. For yeah, yeah. I mean, anybody's going to take that as disrespect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're but gonna get defensive. Then the train was running anyway. Wow. He was lying to me. That's Man. the new that's the new hook down there. That's fucked up. Yeah. Especially if you know somebody wants to go see some castles. Right. And then you know they're only in town for a little while. It's like obviously something's wrong with the kid. He wants to see a castle. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> see what we can get him for yeah uh, and then they always got dude it's the same way bahamas pure bahama food so i'm like where and there's like about i don't know 100 restaurants where we're at he goes a uh, 50 minute drive by uber i'm like that dude there's gotta be something over here they want to make the money uh, yeah, yeah you should come out with uh one of these nights you should fly out to the bahamas i got that hotel for two weeks i think there's two different uh, beds that? it's uh the 25th through the 11th february 25th wow. through the 11th anybody watching this on youtube if you're in the bahamas hit me up the, you got yeah how many, what's, the, what's the hotel called the atlantis it's a nice resort in oh, yeah, nassau nice. yeah dude beautiful place 900 a night i'm there for 14 days wow 
No food. No food. Got to buy my own noodles. Anybody out there wants to bring down a home-cooked meal. Even like those little cup noodles, if you bring some of those. Jail shit. Yeah, we can make them. Pickle juice. (laughs) Yeah, watch the movies. What's in, uh, how crazy would it be if we had fans in the Bahamas? That would be. In Nassau? Can you imagine, dude? I love your stuff. It's all tropical outside, and they're just on YouTube watching podcasts. They make fake Yeezys for a living. Yeah. I could see it. You know, Bahamas is crazy. Nassau is like everybody's trying to come up. They're trying to sell. There's people every 10 feet. They'll sell anything, dude. People will be selling, you know, a t shirt. Somebody a watch or something? Somebody tried selling me a t shirt with somebody else on it. I'm like, who is that? It's like um, one of those t shirts where somebody's died. died. Uh, <laughs> wow. It's just some Jamaican dude, every Bahama dude. Hey, man, you got to hustle. Yeah. I'm just like, what is that? He's Probably like, could have got it for cheap. He wanted to raise money. He's like, I'm here to raise money for him. Wow. You think they're selling, you get some drugs? Huh? They sell cigars. They're always trying to sell you weed down there in those countries. Oh, wow. But it's real weird. All these people, it's like the person, you wouldn't want anything from this person. Like you're like, yeah. this person's struggling themselves. I feel like they got to get me down there. Oh, yeah. And I could be the guy who it's like, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll hook you up. They'd come right up Don't to you, too. Don't trust these guys. Yeah, tourists would come right up to you. Yeah. I mean, Bahamas is a level three now, so you don't want to even be going places with these people. They try to take you down alleys and stuff. My friend told me he's, he went to go, Um, I guess he was trying to pick up something. I think he was trying to find girls, another comic. And, dude, he's telling me they had him going down all these alleys. And I'm mm-hmm. like, dude, that's you're lucky that you survived that. Wow. There was one dude, I heard a story, there was this comedian <laughs> that ended up buying crack in the Bahamas, right, off wow. a real scummy dude, and he got busted. It was a cop. He did four years in prison in the Bahamas wow. for buying crack. True wow. story now. I guess it's I on YouTube. I didn't know they had crack in the Bahamas. Yeah, they made a, a book. Of, somebody made a YouTube video and wrote a book about this comic. I guess he passed away. Wow. But I guess he was real nuts. I wish I knew his name. But yes, four years he spent in a Bahama prison. Wow. From buying crack down there. Yeah, what do you think that Bahama prison is like? Oh my it's gosh. It's just hot. Dude, I couldn't even Probably imagine. like lizards and shit walking around in the Definitely walls. hot. Definitely lizards. I couldn't imagine what you're eating there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Nothing up to grade probably because- it's a the, lot of squatting in it. Dude, yeah. the food that you pay for in the Bahamas, you're like, oh, I don't know if I should. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of Kong, just a lot of fried up nothing. Rice, rice and beans. Any time know. I've ever been in, in like a tropical country where it's always humid and it's always 90 something degrees, the food's not good. Right, just because they don't, they can only you can only do so much when it's that hot outside. Yeah, it, the food you never had it's never like crispy and nice. It's yeah, always it's never just got to be like a bunch of melted shit. You're right. Yeah, chips and queso. Everything is kind of soft. Maybe some wraps. I've never been impressed by any food. I do get it. Like when I'm in the Bahamas, I'll get the Kong or something. But yeah, it's never good. Jerk chicken or something. The real good food. You go out to Europe, man. You find some great fishes. Well, Europe is like the. It gets cold sometimes, so yeah. it's like they can make food crispy. Yeah, I like my food. I like things that are crisp. I feel like down there it's all fried. There's yeah. no like grilled swordfish. At least I haven't nothing that you would want to pay for in the Bahamas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a lot of just like coconuts and everything's always sticky it's huge i hate like, being sticky yeah oh yeah that stuff's sticky what else do they got down there oh it's all the beers little- like water in the bahamas like people drink that like it's soda yeah yeah it's terrible yeah it'll make your knees hurt so you're gonna spend two weeks in that hotel yeah I'm actually excited for that because it's cool to not have to be jumping on planes, traveling. It's right on the beach, dude. I walk outside. I'm on the beach every day. Wow. I'm probably going to get in better shape. You think you're going to like start a family and fall in love in those two weeks? It's a lot of time. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I could initially- You meet a girl that first couple of days. It's like you're in town for a while. Yeah. But then the really- thing is- <laughs> I've been reading the Bible now. I'm no more, no more messing around till I'm, I'm married. I think honestly, uh, that's where you meet the girl. Yeah, get married to you her. Get married within that first week, and you got a whole week to, you know, consummate. Yeah, as they say. You think I'd be lucky enough to get a wife in two weeks down there? I think that's how it works in these tropical countries, right? I would do it, it in a heartbeat. Quick. I would move down there. Plus, it's like you might meet another. I mean, maybe just another person who's staying there. From, oh, true. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe they live in New York. It well, could it's be a lot like of, a, I think it's a lot of old people that go down, right? 
Um, I don't know to be honest with you. The Atlantis people is who like stay a, at like a nice hotel like that. It's got to be like you probably meet a woman who's in like her late fifties. Well, no, I think because this area is like sold as safe, it's the main resort there. Right. I feel like there's gonna be a bunch of different. Age but it's groups. not like you know, it's not like college kids are going to the nine hundred dollar hotel, right? Mm, I don't know. There's people with money, but yeah, it's probably not gonna be a whole bunch of unless they're with their family. You right. Know? Yeah. Well, you're gonna you got to meet like a divorced woman who's like yeah. late 50s yeah and she's got one of those aluminum foil things she tans with yeah yeah she's like a nurse practitioner or something a couple grays but it looks good yeah she's just in town for a couple weeks mm-hmm. and it's like she you know needs some company her husband might have left her you know yeah you do meet a lot like that out there a lot of the divorced women out there do they ever like uh do the thing where they're trying to rub suntan lotion on I haven't had that. You gotta like, you know. You know what I come across on the planes? A lot of times you'll see the business class woman and she'll be telling me a story and keep touching my thigh all the time. Uh, yeah, I, I ran like that. to that about three or four times. They're like, you don't mind, dude. Listen, I'm married. I'm not I'm not like that. Wow. But you'll see that a lot. I mean, I fly a lot. Keep that in mind. So it is. The, there's something about airports that's just, it, there's a romantic, there's aphrodisiac about airports. I don't know what it is. Girls are drinking at 5 a.m. straight hard liquor before a flight. To me, the airport is like the opposite of romance. I mean, the flying yeah. especially. It's just like this is like the most miserable we could all be at the same time. So well, everybody is kind of like it's like like we said before. It's like the gym. Everybody's just headphones. Like I'm, you know, shutting down mentally. No, that's fun. that's what a normal person does. You got to keep in right. mind, there's not a lot of normal people on these flights. Oh, uh, right. You know, you're single. There's a certain thing. When you hit, like, when you're at the airport, first off, you know, the security, there's no way your husband's watching you. He right. didn't get through. You know, you're at gate 54. You see a nice. Well, it's a lot of stuff, too, where it's like, I'm never going to see this person again. Right. Yeah. That's more than any anything else, where it's like, this is a one-time deal. You're on like- a plane to Paris. I actually find it really happens more on the longer flights to Europe. Than it does like the Bahamas. People are minding their own business, but you get on a nice eleven-hour flight to Barcelona or something. Well, you go crazy a little bit. Yeah, and I think you're just not. That's not who they normally are. But it's like that much time in that confined space, so it makes everybody a little bit like loopy. And a lot of them, your, your inhibitions get lowered. They're going down there to meet their girlfriends from high school, so they're right. already on that single girls trip mindset. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Women, a lot of women travel, honestly, man. The planes are full of women. They love uh, yeah. traveling. That's women that are going down to Jamaica, right? They all get their butts rubbed by that one guy. Is that what's going on? Probably. That's I the big see TikTok trend. I don't know if that's like everybody, but there's this one. The videos are always going viral where it's like a woman getting a massage, but it's just the guy on her ass that's rubbing oil and yeah. stuff. And these women are like, oh, this is exactly why I came to Jamaica. There's a guy. And I'm like, you can't do that here. Bro, there's a guy that does it here. He already got the market. He's over by Union <laughs> Square. You ever come across him? No, nah, I haven't been in the market myself. So. Yeah, he's inside Whole Foods. Uh, he passes out his cards all around Union Square, Whole Foods, Washington Square Park. I followed him on Instagram. I had to unfollow him because I'm like, man, this ain't cool. And uh, he, what do you call He dresses with that whole setup. Like he has everything real artsy and like the incense burning type of guy. What kind of, what kind of guys? Piercings. I don't know, like an island dude, probably from Jamaica or some uh, shit. Oh, wow. So he just look like spiritual. Oh, yeah, he is yeah. spiritual. And he, um, dude, all the girls, the real pretty ones, I see him macking his little card. He'll show them the Instagram with the smoke. He's got a little studio over there. Wow. Yep, and he'll be like, you know, come by. The first one's on the house. We do donations. And he's just massaging these girls uh, like nude and, and oil he's like i put so much love into my clients and, wow yep i mean maybe it's a good massage hey it might be girls are going you know yeah there's no way that guy's expecting me and you to show up well you know what else? oh yeah he would be like dude my schedule is full <laughs> yeah. yeah you didn't make a reservation uh, but what about you show uh, up you're like yeah man i fucked up my shoulder playing basketball See, there ain't nothing <laughs> like that for girls around here. See, for guys, there's strip clubs and there's all there's this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Girls don't go. They're out, down and out. They're forced to be good people. I think yeah, I think it just doesn't. Most women just wouldn't find that appealing. I think, to be Right. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. But it's a numbers game. I think game. That's, that is probably why they go down to Jamaica. Because it is like you're like, 
you're in a whole different world. No cameras. But this isn't gonna, well, this isn't going to come back to you know my job. Right. I'm not going to run into somebody I know, so I'll just go down here and get the butt rub. Yeah, just go down there. It's a cheap butt rub. You can go to Jamaica easy. <laughs> yeah, those guys down there. They'll hook you up. They'll take care of you. Get some jerk chicken, cook yeah, for you. Couldn't cost that much. I remember my girlfriend used to always say, you'd be perfect if you had dreadlocks. When was this? My ex I just broke up with. I guess she dreadlocks. dated a guy with dreads. She thought she you'd like, look good with dreadlocks? Yeah, she'd be like, I just want the dreads in my face. She used to tell me wow. that. Yeah, I was like, I can't. I'm not allowed to do that. Oh, how long would it take you to grow your hair out to, to be long like that? Yeah. And it's dreadlocks, so it just has to like... I don't even think my hair would do that stuff. It takes up. Well, I mean, like, you could. It would take, like, a long-ass time, and you would have to put all kinds of, like, that, like, oily shit in it. Yeah. And then it, like, cakes up. She brought it up about five times before we broke up. She's actually going to... (laughs) Believe it or not, she's going to Jamaica. I wonder Uh, if she's going there for the butt rub. Hey. I mean, uh, that's what she wants to do, huh? Yeah, Montego Bay. Uh, I mean, that's just like, that's like tourist Jamaica. Oh, okay, I think cool. to get the butt rub, you like go up into the hills. To Ultra like, Rios or to like something. Bob Marley, Jamaica. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I want to love ya. <laughs> Have you ever known any white dudes that got the dreadlocks? Yeah, my, I, I had friends with one kid I was. He had him in high school. Wow. He was like a skateboarder kid, but his hair was like some dreadlock type of hair like even after he cut it was just thick and kinked up hair oh wow he might have been mixed to be honest with you he was one of them he was like i don't know am i allowed to say light skinned is that still allowed i don't know if he was light skinned yeah, yeah. <laughs> facts are facts i've known like straight up like when you see like a straight up white white guy get dreadlocks though because it's like first off you're gonna get made fun of the second off it's like that is so much work to get what it just comes naturally to other guys. Don't you need to go? Yeah, you got to go to the hair clinic or buy special creams. Well, I, I think you start off by just growing your hair super long and just not washing it. Ugh. And then it gets gross. And then after a while, you got to like twist it up. And put stuff in you there. You twist it up and you're adding like <laughs> rubber bands and all these like Stevie Wonder braids. There's glass beads. Yeah. And then at the end, you got to go to like the this beauty salon and you got to like get that like stuff, the like aluminum foil stuff in it. Yeah. And then eventually at the end, your hair is like all burned and fucked up, and but you had dreadlocks. I bet they're just super gluing it together or something at the store. No, I think they're they're doing it for real, but it's also like every step of the way, you're humiliating yourself more and more. There and then at the end, it's like, who are you even impressing? Right. Well, I mean, once you pull them dreadlocks back, think about how cool that is. You put is a it? hat on it. Or when you People stack shit. them all up top high. I mean, that looks cool if you're black. The white guy with dreadlocks and never gets. There's nobody who respects that guy outside yeah. of maybe the other white guys with dreadlocks. Right at, at the concert, <laughs> but it's like that. You get no love for that. That is so oh. much work for something that just only you think looks good. Dude, you are right. I don't even want to get caught looking at a white dude with dreadlocks. You don't want to shake their hand. Oh, yeah, you don't want to go to their house. Well, if you comment on their Instagram, somebody's gonna call you out. You think this shit's cool? Oh, you know, you stay at his house and his couch is all fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. Let's make a TikTok video. Nah, dude. <laughs> yeah, right. Let's play yeah. hacky sack. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. good. I don't yeah, play they, soccer. They do love hacky sack, too. Yeah. Go sitting on a roof. Yeah. Do Asian people get dreadlocks? Is that a thing in Japan? I've seen it. I wow. think, like, the hair naturally does it more in terms of, like, compared to a white dude's hair. Wow, you would think it's less, because you guys all... I've never seen People an Asian like guy with curly hair. Thick hair, but it's, like, coarse. It's yeah. not like a white guy's hair is more, like, thin and dry. Yeah. Asian people's hair is naturally gets, like, oils and shit going in it. Oh, damn. So once it gets long, then it gets, like... Uh, yeah, that's what, when you see, like, the, like, you know, like an old, wise Chinese man, like, Confucius type. Yeah. He has, like, dreadlocks, basically. Wow. Oh, yeah, that's good. But yeah, even in uh, in Jamaica, I think there is like, there's been like Chinese people living in Jamaica for like a hundred years. Wow, there's like whole like uh, you know settlements of like Chinese dudes Man. who are just like straight up Jamaican, and like I think the locals don't even think it's weird. Yeah, dude, I went and hung out. I was waiting for my dentist appointment. I hung out by Chinatown. Man, that is such a fun looking town over there. Like, I feel like we need to shoot, like, a little fake uh, fighting movie down there for real. They don't like stuff like that down there. Though. Really? Those old guys. They don't play. Yeah, they're all in the mall playing dominoes. I was stuff. trying to uh, 
to like, take a little video secretly of them when I had that little secret camera. Yeah. I was trying to take a video of them gambling. They they got pissed. Wow. And what happened? I mean, they just started yelling at me in Chinese. Did they? And like a bunch of them like got up from the table. The game stopped. Wow. And they're like, yo, that's, that's the problem. So it's like I had to like, wow. I was out. Yeah. That I mean, those guys are all like, that whole area is like still semi like mobbed up. I believe it. Yeah. Yeah, man, there's just trucks unloading and fish being thrown around. Yeah. I was just like, man, it is cool down here. Everybody's moving and talking to the, the delivery activity. guys. Yeah, it's yeah. a lot of activities over there. It's a there. very bustling neighborhood. Yeah. It really is. It's, it reminds me of like how life was like in the 50s. They're like well, hanging like on how, the back of trucks. That's how old like New York was in like tenement days. Yeah. Like, it was like Irish, Im- like Italian immigrants coming here to work in the shoe factory. Yeah. That's what the Lower East Side was before you know you see him hanging clothes well it's just like it's so crowded and there's just little kids playing with the tennis ball on the street mm-hmm. and there's old guys sitting there you know and there's like a guy carrying a pig on a stick it's weird at my dentist office somebody was getting their nails done and i'm like wow this is like crazy on delancey wow. yeah and then the other area is the dentist in the office yeah like it was it was split in two there's Man. nails and teeth clean Medicaid dentists, huh? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> they I just send you where it. they send you. Yeah, I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to the dentist's office. They go, no, it's right here. Wow. I was confused. And then I'm like, well, where? She's like, I have a seat. And wow. I went yeah, I don't back. know about those those cavities now. This guy's yeah. just trying to get a check. <laughs> now, well, they also told me I need a surgery for $7,000. The web on my on my tongue but you know the thing is i used to have my labray pierced and i got in this habit of yeah wow, uh, when was that know, that was when i was younger i still got the hole here i was like 18 wow. thought i was cool we wore my hat sideways thank god i don't think i do maybe one or two actually oh man comment yeah. below um yeah i think i got them somewhere uh so i had the labray man, done i had no idea really this changes everything oh you should know me i had my ears gauged a little ears is whatever yeah but i had the, the labray the, the, Wow. I still have the hole. Jesus Christ. And uh, I mean, I can't put nothing in there, but I had that done. And, uh, you know, so I used to always have a habit. I'd rub it on my gums. So I messed up my gum line. Oh, wow. But she doesn't know that. She's like, oh, your gum lines because this web, you need surgery. It's $7,000. And, you know, she's so, so sweet and nice. She's like, but you should really get it done. And I'm just like, um, I feel like just because... I feel like you're robbing me right now. I don't need those 7000 It's not covered under Medicaid. Oh, wow, yeah. Well, that's one of those things. You go to the next dentist, and they're like, no, what are you talking about? Yeah. You're fine. Yeah. yeah. Dentists, are the, that's the most shady kind of doctor. Yeah, I feel like she was extra nice. Normally, a dentist is like, hey, you need this done. Today, she's all like, t- she's had her hand on my chest. How are you today, hon? Wow. I'm just like, well, where am I? What's going on yeah, here? Don't, don't touch me. Yeah. <laughs> is are you dentist. okay? Yeah. Yeah. She was really yanking my mouth open too, man. I don't know. Maybe I got a little mouth or what. Wow. You know, you think about it, like uh, the helper there. There's like four hands in your mouth in the dentist chair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She it's kept saying, "Open." I'm like, "I'm trying." I <laughs> <laughs> like. She's wow. getting in there. A lot of plaque, I guess. And I've been flossing. She didn't even say good job on flossing. Oh uh, wow. She just kept it moving. You ever notice how they haven't actually changed the technology in dentist's office? like since we were kids yeah it's the exact same tools yeah it is it doesn't even like they haven't added any like ipads to it or anything either yeah it's you the would same. Think. You still press a button and it starts sucking and then like well, you spray water now the x-ray isn't on that clear black thing now it's on a computer screen right yeah but That's even that though to do the x-ray they still put the whole vest yeah. thing on you and they go out of the room and flip the switch yeah, they hit me with that. And even just like poking around your mouth with this a little metal scraper thing. It's the same scraper from like when we were kids. They need to make a gum that you chew it and it takes all the plaque off your teeth. That's what the dentists don't want though. Yeah, but That's you what know the white man wants you to keep, you know, yeah. <laughs> buying his drugs. You know what it is? That TikTok video will come out, this person disappeared after they invented this plaque mo- removal gum. Yeah. You know. It'll be a little kid that's seven years old. So uh, what I did was I mixed sand with the gum, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. and won some water. Man. Yeah, man. I was thinking for the podcast, man, you need to go to one of these hood barber shops and see who can get the best fade for each <laughs> big <of> barber shop. <laughs> that's funny. I could do that. <laughs> we'll each pick a barber shop. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get uh, like some lines. Oh, I think we got to go to the same barber shop, or we just got to get them competing against each other. Oh, who's your best yeah. guy? Who's your best? Yeah, who's the best guy? In the yeah, shop? we're gonna do a competition. Get free, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I want the boozy fade. Yeah, there we go. That's what's up. Yeah, little boozy badass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we'll talk about basketball. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. That new quarterback from the Niners. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <sighs> <laughs> Oh, man. So you're leaving on Friday or on Saturday and then you get back next week? I get back on Valentine's Day. And then you leave again and like... Uh, the 20th, I fly out to the Bahamas. I'm gone till the 10th. Wow. So it's about 20 days. Well, first I'm doing a gig somewhere. I got North Carolina. I'm swinging Let's by plug there. these dates. Yeah, North Carolina. The uh, Well, the thing is I don't got a door deal. So I'm almost like, but yeah, if you guys still, do want to see me, yeah, not that I'd be greedy, bring, come bring hang out. North Carolina. Um, I'll be posted on Instagram. Uh, I, I'll post it on Charlotte? Instagram. I want to say, yeah, it is Charlotte. Okay. Charlotte, North Carolina, the Comedy Zone down there on the 21st of February. That's oh, the, yeah, then I'm doing um, uh, Columbus, with Georgia. The, with the other guy? Yeah. What's well, who's the other guy? Uh, we'll see. Will Clifton, funny comedian. Oh, yeah, we'll, we will see. Yeah, well, we will see. He's funny. <laughs> Military guy. It's going to be a fun hang. And then um, Georgia, I got, uh, what is it, Columbus, Georgia, I'm hitting. Okay. I never knew that existed. I told all yeah. these people in Columbus, Ohio, I'm going to be there. Oh, uh, wow. I feel bad about that. Well, that's one of those names. It's like Springfield. Or, yeah. There's always a city. yeah. yeah. And then I'm in Tampa for the night of the 25th, but no shows, just hanging. For what? Uh, just before my flight to the Bahamas. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. And then the, because the room's not ready till till the other day. But uh, also on March 23rd and 22nd, I'm in Youngstown, Ohio. Wow. Hometown boy. Yeah, he's man. Coming back. Steel City Comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Now he's famous. Yeah, You gotta man. show all those kids in high school. Look what I made. Now of. who's dumb? Yeah. Yeah, I now who's too. in slow classes? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, now who dropped out? <laughs> I don't wash cars no more. Yeah, I don't know if you heard, but I ain't shining no more. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Where's your shine box? Yeah. Spider's coming back. Yeah. Done. Somebody followed me on Instagram, and I don't. I think they're bullshitting, and it's funny. They're telling me they're Spider Rico from Goodfellas. They look nothing like them. It's a separate account. They didn't respond when I'm like, wow. you know, I was like, I was a big fan of yours, which is a weird thing because who's a fan of, or Spider, not Spider Rico, Sp- that's Rocky, but Spider from um, Goodfellas that gets yeah. shot in the foot. That's uh, Chrissy from The Sopranos. Oh, is it? Yeah. So this dude's just bullshitting me then. No, but I mean, that's the actor play. Maybe he's the real guy. I don't even know. You think it is? Based. No. I mean, I don't think the real guy was in, is messaging people uh, on, yeah. on Instagram. That's a crazy thing to say. That you it are. is. Yeah. And it's like, who's a fan of Spider from, like, I guess he's a good guy. I didn't realize he's in Sopranos, too, but it's like, that's a weird one to pick. I'm getting no response. I'm like, are you really him? Wow. What do you think's up with that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not him. But I mean, the fact that he picked that specific of a guy, he's not yeah. saying that he's De Niro. Well, maybe he thinks I'd catch on to De Niro. Oh, uh, yeah. Hey, you got a lot of these messages, huh? Yeah, I do. And you respond to all of them? No, but if the people are genuine, I try to. Wow. They'll start off genuine. Then, you know, sometimes you'll get asked for money, spiritual things. People, I got this guy from Harvard that wants to manage me. I guess he's like, I don't know what he does at Harvard, but his career is to manage ta- like comedians. That's what he wants to do. And he's like, man, we'll go all the way to the top. He's like, I was in a... um frat i got connections all i heard was freemasons luminati i'm like i better step back from this one. Oh, that's those are the guys you want though right you think well you're trying to get to the freemason level you, you gotta get you gotta get the inside scoop yeah i mean i just no one else is gonna get you guys there. a little yeah the manager though he, you shake some hands and, yeah you know you don't gotta wear the goat head maybe i should do it that guy's gonna try to make you wear a dress. People always tell me they go, "You want a manager that isn't managing anybody else? They could just focus on you." I've always heard the opposite of that. Really? You want a manager who actually has experience in the industry? Has well, I a guess real you roster. could have experience, but but I mean, not like a he, lot of clients. Oh, to prove himself as being a legit guy, though, you, you want the same guy who's like, "Would no, you?" No, I know work Shane Gillis. I'll hook. Well, what about, what if the guy, what if Spider's manager came to you? Would you go to him and be like, yeah, and he's like, you know, I'm know still spider representing needs to, Spider. I don't even know what he needs a manager for. Though. 
<laughs> well, what if his manager yes. came to you and was like, I want a manager, Dan? Nah. You wouldn't let him manage you? No, you got to get managed by the guy who's like doing what you want to do. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense. Find that guy. But Lots yeah, why would world. somebody who works at Harvard be managing comedians? So that's that's a little bit of a red flag to me. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I don't trust almost Harvard? anybody online anymore. Yeah. Anybody who would DM me uh, like directly, this is definitely a scam. Yeah. For guys like me, I, it's always like there's no reason anybody would be actually messaging me other than to get something out of me. It would be no pretty one's ever, direct. Uh, no one's ever offering me anything. You know what I mean? It's always weird if it's not a direct message. Like if somebody doesn't come through, hey, man, I love your stuff. I got this project I want to do. Yeah, exactly. When they come through like... You are a unique soul. That's like, I'm not answering. Well, no, here's the thing. If you are going to DM somebody like that, put the pertinent information in the first message. Yeah. Sometimes the first message is like, hey, how's it going? And it's like, oh, I'm not trying to, <clears throat> just tell me what the thing is. People DM me scams. I get some good scams sometimes. One I got, there's a gym in Brooklyn, I guess. It's part of a, a building, like a nice building. And some kid said he just walks in. Nobody asks him questions. It's by his house. And it just every time he just walks in, been using the gym for two months in somebody else's building. Who DM'd you? Uh, the kid. He was like, Why? hey, here goes a good scam. He, did, he actually sent me a video of him doing it. Why is he telling you though? I don't get it. I don't know. He's just like this. Is a good, I guess because we do the scam videos. I get them all the time. People t DM me scams. Oh They're yeah. They're like, yeah. oh, do you know about this one? And some of them, I'm like, oh, dude, that you're a messed up individual. <laughs> like, wow. You know, like some of them this will criminal shit. Yeah, some of them will be straight up like um, how to apply for loans and like you know, I guess there's grants you could get. Wow. You know, I don't know. It's fucked up that they're trying to tell you about it, but they're trying to scam you at the same time. Yeah. No honor. Send me money. Yeah. Headshots. Number one scam. That's really how you make money in New York. Get the camera we got, cheap little $400 Nikon, D5500, you know. Yeah. Tell people, hey, I'll make you headshots. 50 bucks a pop, meet me in this office. Yeah. You go to the library, free room real quick, bang, bang. Plus, kids these days, everybody wears the ski mask. Yeah. They all got that poosh iced like the, not ski mask, but like the, whatever, balaclava. Whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's what we got to start wearing. As a photographer, if you wore that, you'd get away with everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You take pictures of people you and even make it your whole thing. Faceless photography. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? You go by all the smoke shops now. They all got a sign in the front that says no ski mask. Oh, yeah. It's crazy they even got to say that. Man, Just think about how many clients people are walking by. They're about to walk in and buy some weed. I mean, the they're stuff like, oh, in New York. Welcome. And you know what's crazy about New York? So crazy that I see these videos on TikTok, like of people busting windows out of a building in Union Square. I'm there almost every day. I don't remember even. I don't even notice that glass windows have been busted out. Or maybe it's oh, an yeah, old yeah. video, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People just will straight up take a pipe and shatter a ten foot glass window. In no New reason. York, right? Just well, I think it. the reason they do it is because they know nothing's going to happen. Our laws. But I mean, like, strip. why would they? Do you have nothing to gain from doing it other than right? It must feel good. Yeah, like it's like now you won. That's what they think in their head. I feel like. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, well, it's like doing graffiti or something. Yeah, it's like hey, I, you know, I won now. I'm the big man now. All right, so we should probably close with another Bible quote. Get a good one for us. John fifteen five, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart, apart from me, you can do nothing. That's very deep. Imagine that's like some Samuel L. Jackson shit you say right before you yeah. pop somebody. Yeah. Without me, you're nothing. Pop. Bam, bam, bam. Yeah. That's Big what you kahuna. get. Big kahuna <laughs> burger. Now, see, that's a deep one, dude. I believe that one's true, man. You I'm will know you. my name is the Lord, and I lay my vengeance upon you. So, guys, take that quote. and uh, That's like some jail shit. You get tatted on your chest. That is. <laughs> That's a quote to live by right there is a top quote. <laughs> I'm telling you because you'll see. I am the vine, you are the branches. That is cold. Guys, try Who it for a week, stuff? people listening, and comment how it works out. Watch some doors start open. <laughs> you'll go this way. You'll be like, oh, I need my keys. Uh, imagine, though, you're a Spanish conquistador, and you just wind up somehow in Africa somewhere, 
in like you know west africa and you the tribe the tribe that there doesn't trust you because you're a white guy and you have guns yeah and you try walking up to them and you're like no 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 let me let me just tell you about this i am the i am the vine you are the branches as these are fighting words yeah you'd have to come up with a way to show them <laughs> That's the no, language no, you don't barrier. understand. If you remain in me and I in you, oh, you will they bear are. much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I see how <laughs> I could kind of see the... So aggressive. You remain in me and I'm in you. If you're in prison, that might get a little bit... Yeah, yeah it's you a know, bit much. Or over there in another country. This is such a... Yeah, I mean, like, it's, it's no mystery why this turns into a warlike book. Well, the thing is, sometimes you talk to God about people and you could see it's like pressing buttons on. They'll be like, well, yeah, but, you know, then why did, why wasn't he there for me? How come I didn't get on law and order? It's like, yeah, dude, yeah. God ain't worried about putting you on law and order. He's protecting you for what's right for you. Damn. I never got, I don't have any tattoos. And I haven't really had, like, just because I never felt inspired enough to get a tattoo. But, yeah, it would be a sick fucking tattoo. I just, my, yeah. my entire back. Oh, dude. dude that on would some be. Yakuza shit, I go to the beach and I just pull it off. Yeah. And I just act like it's no big deal. Yeah. I feel like. I you, am the vine, you are the branches. And you'd have to start working your calves <laughs> like crazy. You'd yeah. be like one of those dudes. Like, it's like, what's he play rugby? Like, you know, one yeah. of those Asian dudes with the big calves. <laughs>